Inspired by a trip Kelly and I recently took to Israel, today's food is Mediterranean, kind of in nature and style. My God, it's gonna be so good, so good. Stay right where you are. I'm Sam, the cooking guy. <laughs> this show is about food that's big in taste and small in effort. Yeah, man, is that good. Totally easy stuff anyone can make. Look at, look at them going already. And everything comes from a supermarket. You take all those other cooking shows like this. You don't need them anymore. This is Sam the Cooking Guy. And we start with breakfast. Something that I had uh, in uh, Tel Aviv four to 75 times called shakshuka. It's this really great eggs in a flavorful sauce thing. I think you're gonna dig it and it's pretty easy. So what we need is we need a red pepper, a green pepper, and some onion. And this will be the sequence that will shorten what I'm about to do because who really needs to see me just stand here and cut a bunch of stuff. And now that we've got all that done, our pan just, just actually starting to smoke, everything goes in. On the heat, a little oil. And we stir. And not too much heat. We want these to caramelize a little bit. We want the flavors to really become beautiful. This should probably take seven minutes to pan. Look, nice, soft, right? So now we're gonna add some garlic. And so we'll give it a little bit of oil. And then the garlic, we'll let it start to get a little fragrant, which will not take long. Now it gets two things, smoked paprika and cumin. We'll give it maybe a tablespoon of smoked paprika. This is really good. So these, these, these flavors that are just amazing and maybe a teaspoon and a half or so of the cumin. Let this just toast away slightly. And then the next great ingredient, uh, tomatoes. And this is a can of San Marzano whole peel tomatoes. They're the best ones. They're so delicious. Okay, right? I like to try and break them up. You have to go slow or you're gonna end up wearing the tomatoes. So this is a 28 ounce can. We're gonna put this whole thing in here. So now everything will start to, start to do its thing. You make this in a pan large enough that you'll hold the eggs. You're gonna cook it right in here. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna give it five minutes of simmering. Beautiful. It's all mixed, the smell, the flavors, the salt that I didn't put in. Salt. Five minutes, and then, and then we add spinach. How many handfuls, Sandra? How many handfuls? One. One. Two handfuls of spinach. Because watch what happens. Watch how this thing is just gonna like wilt down to nothing. So mix it, stir it, simmer it. Give it another, say, 15 minutes or so. All right, it's been 15-ish minutes, and come take a look. Look at the spinach, down, disintegrated. The sauce, lovingly simmered until the flavors are beautiful. So here's what we do. We're gonna make four little uh, indentations to give the egg a resting place. And then we crack the egg right in. And you don't want to crack the egg I mean, break it. And we are four for four. Now take the spoon and just put a little of the sauce just to, to help sort of nestle the guy in. Don't cover up the yolk. Six minutes, a white cooked yolk still running. That's the goal. The great unveiling. Oh, and look how gorgeous. Man. Okay, we're done. So here's what we do. We take it, put it here, Michael. And then here's what we're gonna give it. We're gonna give it two things. Some cilantro, 
like a nice amount of cilantro and some green onion. Okay, now look at that. That is unbelievable. Shakshuka. Get one of these guys. And play like that. Look at the onions, the peppers. back in Tel Aviv. I'm sitting at a little cafe, watching people go by with their dogs. Oh, there's a ton of dogs there. God, I love that city for that. All right, we can't stop here. We've got a lot of stuff to do. When we come back, uh, this was breakfast, let's do lunch. A sort of a uh, chopped Greek salad with uh, grilled chicken. Oh, God. Lots of herbs, tons of herbs, don't go away. This is Sam, the cooking guy. Welcome back. It's a Mediterranean-ish food day, and we're gonna make a really uh, herby Greek chicken salad. Herb, gr grilled chicken, Greek Chicken, Greek salad with grilled chicken and lots of herbs. That was hard. Three parts to this. Make the salad, make the dressing, cook the chicken. Greek salad wouldn't be anything without tomatoes, cucumber, red onion. So that's where we start. And we're making a, a, a chopped version, so smaller pieces. English cucumber, don't have to peel it because it'll give us this beautiful green color on the outside. So far, we like everything about the same size. Kalamata olives, always. I say to Kelly, Kel, do we have any Kalamata olives? Yes. And it wasn't a lie, but they were the already sliced ones. It's not the look that I wanted for this. Anyway, it's fine. It saves us a little time. Now, remember I promised herbs, lots of herbs. So here's the herb part, parsley. This would be basil, or as they say in England, basil. Have you got any fresh basil? Basil. <sighs> Mint. Mint. One of the great joys of the fresh herb world. So you got your mint. You got your basil. You got your parsley. The herbs go in. Okay. Look at that. Fresh, gorgeous. That's a pretty freaking salad. This dressing, really simple. Really simple. Olive oil. Good olive oil. Lemon juice. Almost equal parts of lemon juice and olive oil. Stand by. One clove of garlic. Salt, pepper. Let's do this. Let's let's get the chicken prepped. We'll take it outside and we'll finish everything out there. Is that cool? We like that, right? Here's how we always do the deal with the chicken breast. Oh crap. Sorry. We try and get it all over our hands. I was trying so carefully not to. Now I got chicken breast here and all right. so uh, a little oil in the bag. And here's what the oil's gonna do. It's gonna keep this thing from tearing when I beat it flat. If you try and cook a chicken breast, it's difficult because one side's thick and the other's thin. If you flatten it out, you, you now have something that you can cook evenly. Okay, out we go. Okay, so here we are, hot grill. There's our now relatively flat chicken. Season liberally. Pepper. And then we'll just lay this guy down like a blanket. While that's cooking, I have my salad right here. A little dressing, not all of the dressing. 
Don't go crazy now. You can always add more dressing. You can't take dressing off. So do this. Feta. Why didn't I put the feta in at this point before? Anybody? Somebody? No, I didn't want it to bust up too much from all the mixing. Because I like, you know, to be pretty nice. And that is a gorgeous salad. When this comes off, we eat. All right, so there's the salad. Look it, it's gorgeous. But wait, don't stop there. Because the chicken, oh my. Oh. And then we would do this. Okay, it is so tender and moist. Look it, do you see that? Do you see that? See the juice run down my finger? So I'll get a little bit of the salad and a little bit of the chicken. Come on now. If you're not making this tonight, there's something very wrong with you. I mean that in the nicest way possible. Okay, next we're making Israeli couscous. I love Israeli couscous. So good, so good, so good. All right, don't go away. This is Sam, the cooking guy. All right, we're working our way through uh, Mediterranean Day. This is Israeli couscous. They also call it pearl couscous because it looks like little pearls. We're gonna toast it first. You don't have to, but it just gives it extra flavor. So I have a, a little pot, we'll put a little oil in and get my favorite spatula, high heat spatula. High heat spatula, ladies and gentlemen, you should have one. So when you're in a pot like this or you're in a pan or a wok or something, it won't melt. All right, so now in they go. And then this happens. We're not trying to, you know, like brown them necessarily. They'll get a little color, but the, it's more about flavor. Two minutes, two to three minutes, that's all. And nobody let me forget arugula. There's an arugula step coming up. So now we add water. Just cover it with water. But I'm gonna put maybe a little bit more water in than would be necessary because I need room for the arugula step. Uh, don't spill, don't spill. Okay, we're gonna add some salt. Bring it to a boil, turn it down to a simmer and let it cook about seven, eight minutes. In the meantime, we got to do uh, something that will go in it. So these ingredients we used earlier, same ones. Arugula, while I'm here, let me take it out. Oh, and mushrooms. You almost let me forget the mushrooms. We'll go with the size of the couscous being our guide, meaning we'll cut these things you know, little like that. Throw this in. Just get cooked. Okay, some peppers and now some uh, onion. Shiitakes. I love shiitakes. And these are fresh shiitakes as opposed to dried ones, which if you have dried, that's fine. You just have to reconstitute them, which means put them in some hot water till they plump back up again. Look how nice. The smell from right here. It's tremendous. It's tremendous. It's tremendous. It's, it reminds me of my mother-in-law. She gave me a, one, a watch once that was an Italian watch, and she gives it to me, she goes, it's Italian. <laughs> I love my mother-in-law. I call her almost every day, and my mother, my own mother and my mother-in-law. Shall we? Let's introduce the mushrooms into this whole nonsense.
Uh, garlic. Let's put some garlic in. Okay, that's almost there. That's almost there. I'm gonna try an arugula trick. And that's almost there. Baby arugula. I'm a fan, a huge fan. Look at it, it's fantastic. It's the best. I need a little uh, dressing. I gotta do this fast. I need some ginger. Oh, now I really gotta rush. Because here's what I want. I want to make this little dressing, but I want the dressing to go on this couscous and that stuff when it's hot. Okay, some oil, neutral. Huh? Soy. Uh, look, take the arugula and throw it in here. And use some tongs, don't burn yourself. Just let it, let it do this. Rice vinegar. Sesame oil, sesame oil. It still needs salt. And some red pepper flakes. Oh, I'm making a mess. Okay, the dressing's a little Asian. Sorry. There's no time for perfection now, Michael. Garlic, ginger, salt. Now, oh wait, stay, 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 stay. Oh. The couscous and the arugula drain. Together. Then it goes. This. Now some dressing. And the, the point of doing it while it's hot is that it kind of soaks it all in. I'm so hot, you can't believe it. That was honestly painful. <laughs> oh boy, is that good. And, and the, the arugula thing right at the end. A great way to deal with it. Mm. All right, I'd like to say it's been a great show, but it's not over yet, we have one more thing. And it involves lamb and tahini. What's tahini? Oh, just you wait. You're gonna dig this. You. And you know who I'm talking to. You are gonna dig this. This is Sam, the cooking guy. All right, welcome back. Uh, we're in the home stretch. This, ladies and gentlemen, is tahini. Tahini is essentially sesame paste. Think of it like sesame peanut butter. In Israel, tahini goes on everything, and it should because it's so delicious. But to get it where you want it, you have a couple steps. It's easy. You have to mix it because it can settle a bit and then you end up with just the thin stuff at the top. We're gonna take about a half a, look, looks just like creamy peanut butter, right? We'll go half a cup. It's gonna go in here with, you know, forget Mediterranean day, it should be garlic day. Everything we're using has garlic in it. Garlic goes in. Lemon juice goes in. Tahini goes in. Great, huh? A little cumin. Salt, of course. You use approximately the same amount of water as you do tahini. And we're off. Let's take a look. 
We want this mix. It's starting to smell right. All right, so now a little parsley. And yes, it's going to a processor, but why make the processor work harder than it has to? We'll throw some of this in. We'll continue along. We still have more water. And we check. Now, look at that. Do you see that? That's what you want. One more. Smooth, creamy. Now we take it out. There we go. Step one, we make the tahini. Step two, we make little lamb meatballs. I clean up, we make them. This is ground lamb. Could you do this with um, ground beef? Yes. Ground turkey? Yes, but why it's so dry? Ground chicken? Yes. But the point is, lamb is a whole nother flavor. It's about changing flavors and adding. That's what we're doing today. We're giving you flavors that maybe you're not using in your everyday life. That's what this is about. Okay, here's what this gets. Simple. Salt, regular black pepper, uh, a little bit of olive oil. I like, I like a little bit of the richness. And back with our friend Cumin for a quick visit. And some uh, red pepper flakes. Okay, that's it. Now we mix, right? Now what you're gonna do, you're gonna make little little guys like this. Okay, so here's what I like to do. I like to take these guys and throw them in the fridge just to let them set. Just to let them set up a little bit. You give it half an hour, that's fine. I've got tongs. Here are the uh, little lamb uh, balls. They need a little oil. So you don't want them to stick. And, uh, and here's what we're using. Ready? A grill pan. How genius is that, right? Uh, it lets you cook small things without the hassle of them either A, falling through or being difficult to wrestle. So. Okay, is this pan not the best invention ever? Oh, to go with it, uh, we made a little salad. Well, me, I made a little salad by cutting up some tomatoes and some parsley and a little olive oil, salt and pepper, and that's it. It's supposed to be really simple, and it is really simple. I couldn't be happier. Okay, check this out. Right in the middle, what's that say, 132? A little more than 10 degrees away. Let's throw on the pitas. I didn't drop that one. I, I caught it halfway. All right, so we're done. We're done. Kill this. Kill this. These? Okay, yeah, they're almost there too. Let's put them in here. Hold on. They all gonna fit, Michael? Oh, of course. That's beautiful. Okay, so here's how this whole thing goes down. So look, the last time I did this, which was a couple nights ago at a friend's house, we made appetizer versions of these. So you cut the pita, and then you, oh, it's hot. And then you open it up. Okay, okay. Then we take some of the tahini, and we put it in here. I mean, some of this little parsley tomato thing here. And then I like to take one of these little guys and bust them, or two, and bust them because it's good. And then a little bit more. And you're like, what the hell is happening in my mouth, Sam? There's lamb, 
There's tahini, there's the parsley, there's garlic, there's cumin, there's... Why have I not eaten like this all the time? Because you're doing the same thing all the time and you have to stop that. Try something new. Once a week, that's all I say. Once a week, you try something new. And at the end of the year, you've got 52 new things that you know how to make and hopefully love. All right. That's it. Look, that's gorgeous. That's it for me. It's been a great day. Great day. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, whatever else there is. And don't forget, at the end of the day, it's Italian. Go to cookingguy.com for the recipes.